What's up guys, it's Josh and we're back again with another video. Yesterday I discussed my tips for scoring a perfect 800 on the physics subject test and today we're talking about math. The majority of students that end up taking subject tests take at least one math one. The problem is there's two levels of math subject tests. Math level one draws most of its questions from algebra one and algebra two as well as geometry, while math level two focuses more on the concepts from pre-calculus and trig. This may seem like a big difference between the two tests, but there is a lot of overlapping material. A lot of students label themselves as not a math person and choose to take math level one, even if they've taken a pre-calc class. That is exactly what you should not do. If you have any experience with pre-calc or trig, you should absolutely sign up for math level two. Why, you may be wondering? It's because the way the tests are curved. If you miss one question on the math level one test, your score is automatically bumped down to a 790. But on the math level two, you can miss as many as three, sometimes four questions and still get a perfect 800. The curve is insane. I'm gonna go out on a limb here and say that if your goal is to get a perfect score on one of these tests, math level two is the way to go. Using the techniques I'm about to share with you, I not only managed to learn all the content on the exam, but also managed to get a perfect 800. These techniques can be yours now for only 30 payments of $19.99. Should be done handling, not included. First step is to go pick up the Barron's Math Subject Test Prep Book. This one right here. I'll leave the Amazon link in the description. Why Barron's, you may ask, and not the official SAT prep book? Well, Barron's not only has a chapter dedicated to every major concept that is on the test, but also its practice tests are much more difficult than the actual thing. If you can get a good score on a Barron's practice test, you can absolutely get an 800 on the actual subject test. When you start looking through the book, you'll realize that you know about 80% of the content that is on the exam. But the catch is the questions are asked in a much less straightforward way, which can often make simple questions seem convoluted or confusing. This test is a lot harder than your vanilla basic math SAT test that you're used to taking. As for the 20% of content that I didn't know, it mainly consisted of reviewing conics, sequences, and series, and learning the probability rules for permutations and combinations. You will not have to find the second order partial derivative or derive the formula for the triple integral and spherical coordinates. A lot of the content on this exam is very basic, but you have to watch the way that the question is worded. Although I did find that a basic knowledge of calculus could help you out on a couple questions. So here's my study schedule. I worked my way through each section of the book taking notes in my spiral notebook on every single concept and making sure to complete every practice question that they offered me. Once you make it through every section of the book, you can begin working on the practice test. Quick sidebar before you actually start the practice test, your TI-84 calculator is going to be your best friend. If you don't want to waste time with manually doing the distance formula, geometric sequences, or conics, you can program your calculator to do it for you. There's a lot of resources online for how to go about doing that, and even if you're lazy like I was and didn't want to type them out, you can actually plug in your calculator into your computer and download programs off a couple websites online. Your biggest challenge with this test will be time, and having a TI-84 stuffed with programs will make you much more efficient. So I would sit down and take the whole practice test all in one sitting, and then score my test and review all the questions. I would take note of every single question I missed, make sure I knew why I missed the question, and make sure that I knew everything I needed to know and I would never miss a question again in the future. The key to improving your score on these tests is to learn from the questions you've missed because I guarantee you, you will see a similar question again. You also have to time yourself throughout this whole process. I often found myself running out of time in the first couple practice tests. But with more practice, your time will gradually go down and you'll get more comfortable doing the type of questions that they ask. By the time you have finished all the practice tests in the book and taken notes on all the major concepts, you are ready for the real thing. Just keep in mind that when I took my first practice test, I missed eight questions. And when I took my fifth practice test, the last one, I only missed three. Just keep practicing. Hope you guys found this video enjoyable and educational. If so, you should definitely go check out my How I Got Into Yale video. It's my favorite video that I made so far. I spent a lot of time adding all the fancy edits and it looks really cool. If you wanna see more of me, drop a like and hit that big red subscribe button. Comment down below what you thought and what I should do next. As always, I'll be back again with another video tomorrow. See you soon.